welcome back to another episode. A problem that I was having in my house was block wastewater taking a long time to reach the city sewer line. As a result, the basement shower had to be used for a specific amount of time and the water would not go down for hours. If the sewer became flooded with rainwater, the clog could lead to basement flooding. Also, the house would end up smelling really bad if the clog wasn't removed. So getting a rotor router was the best affordable option to clear the pipes. I was curious to see how effective this machine was in clearing the clogged pipes. Off screen, I'll be wearing safety goggles. On screen, I'll be wearing the correct gloves. If you get this machine, read the instruction manual and video I have linked in the description below. The machine that I got was the Speed Rotor General Mini Rotor XP. It has a cable length of 100 feet, but I don't know the cable size, which can range from half an inch to a quarter inch depending on the pipe size. The instruction manual tells users that they should only wear leather gloves and the machine should come with it. It goes on to warn that you should never use any type of gloves such as cloth, rubber, or coated gloves and to never grasp a rotating cable with a rag. To get the maximum service from your cables, be sure that they are clean and well oiled. This not only provides running lubrication but greatly extends the life of the cables as well. Some users periodically pour oil directly into the drum. Then, as the drum turns, the cable gets complete lubrication. The FlexiTube pressure control knob will control the rate of the cable being fed down the pipe. The tighter the knob, the slower the rate and or halting of the cable being fed. The looser the knob, the faster the rate of the cable. Adjust accordingly to your situation. In my case, the knob had a moderate amount of tension to steadily go down the pipe since I didn't know what a clog was and I didn't want the cable to twist on itself if it hit a blockage. The feed level controls the feeding rate and direction of the cable. Move the lever down to feed the cable out of the drum. The further the levers move downwards, the faster the cable will feed out. Move the lever up to attract the cable into the drum. When the lever is in the middle, which is the neutral position, the cable will spin in place. There are going to be moments where the rotor router is so heated that it needs to cool down and have a hard circuit reset. The instruction manual details what situation you should use this feature, so take time to read it before operating the machine. The contact motor switch tells the motor what direction it should rotate to feed the cable. According to the manual, the switch should be held in position to use reverse. Failure to follow this basic instruction can lead to hardware failure. Here's the foot pedal that will trigger the entire machine to rotate. Position the air foot pedal for easy accessibility. The machine is designed for one person operation. Be sure you can quickly remove your feet from the pedal in an emergency. The ground file circuit interrupter protects you from shock if a short circuit should occur. Check that the receptacle is properly grounded. Test the GFCI before each use. It may be hard to see, but instructions are etched on the interrupter, so if it's your first time using such a machine, do read it or check the instruction manual. Here are the cutters that came with the machine. The arrowhead started drill, which gets water flowing, the one half U cutter for cutting and scraping, the two inch side cutter blades for cutting and scraping. These ones were pretty effective in cutting the roots which the gimlet would later pick up. The boring gimlet for removing loose objects. You can see that it latched onto the roots that the cutter blades left behind. Changing the cutters are easy. Line the hole in the cutter to the end of the wire and screw it in with a flathead screwdriver. Don't do what I did here and swap the blades with its loose screw near the open pipe entrance. The cutters are stored on a clip behind the machine drum for easy access. Whenever you're switching between cutters, I strongly recommend that you clip the cutter immediately so you don't lose them. Cutters like the airhead are weightless so it's easy to lose. The 2 inch side cutter blades are composed of 2 individual blades, so if you lose one, then the cutter blades become useless. The wheels are made out of solid rubber, so you don't have to worry that it will pop if you need to move the machine over rough terrain. When transporting the Geno XP, hook the guide tube to the guide tube holder. It will require a bit of strength to hook it and it can easily whip towards you and injure you if you're not careful, so don't rush hooking the tube. Keep your body and face opposite to where the tube will whip towards. 
you also want to have the cable in a neat and evenly coiled pattern in the joint before and after using it. Having kinks, twists, and other non-evenly coiled patterns will deteriorate the strength of the cable over time. More importantly, the cable can break when you are operating the machine, which may result in serious injury. The instruction manual gives more details on what to do if the cable starts to twist, kink, or buckle, depending on the situation. Here, you can see one person operating the machine as the manual instructed, so you should do the same. As previously mentioned, the feed lever controls the feeding rate and direction of the cable. Move the lever down to feed the cable out of the drum. The further the lever is moved downwards, the faster the cable will feed out. Move the lever up to retract the cable into the drum. When the lever is in the middle, the neutral position, the cable will spin in place. With a glove hand on the guide tube, step on the air foot pedal to start the machine. Feed the cable into the line. Adjust the feeding rate to the resistance met. Do not force the cable. Let the cutter do the work. The job won't go any faster and you could damage the cable and you could injure yourself. Moving the machine from forward to reverse position with a feed control lever. I'm using hot water to clean the cable of toxic by waste before it returns to its drum. Every situation is different and they may not have access to a hose with hot water, but do make the effort to clean the cable before you store it away. Now you can see the thing that I was hoping to avoid and the mistake that was made. The cable buckled onto itself. The big no-no was using physical force to untwist the cable. In the heat of the moment or just general shock that the cable buckled, I just forgot what the instruction said. There are two probable causes as to why the cable tangled in the drum. I could have been forcing the cable. The solution then would have been not to force the cable and let the cutter do the work. The second reason could have been that the machine was running in reverse. The solution would have been not to run the machine in reverse when I'm retracting the cable from the drain. So learn from my first mistake. The basement has a second drainage that was clogged. With the cable entangled now, I already moved the cable forward and now I'm bringing it back by having the feed control lever in reverse. Now the cable should fill it in the drum without tangling again. The new issue that I ran into had to do with the cable being unable to retract this time because of the bend in the pipe plus the blockage there. I solved this issue by removing the front post knob and letting the cable run forward for a few seconds. With the stiffness removed, the cable began returning to its drum. Here's another mistake I made, overheating the motor. I'm not too sure if I had to do with me running it for too long, but it would not turn. You can hear me stepping on the air pedal and the buzzing noise it gives. So I gave it a couple of hours to cool down. Nope, still wasn't cool enough, and the reset button option didn't help either. I didn't want to yank the cable unless it get caught on something or I get it tangled again. I had to leave the cable stuck in the pipe overnight, which an actual professional would never do or recommend. When morning came, the motor was fully cooled, the motor reset button pressed, and now I was able to get it back into the drum. Using this machine was a lot of work, so I ended up getting a professional to look at this issue. It turns out that the entire sewage line was filled with tree roots. The entire clay pipes had to be replaced with PVC pipes. The Speed Roto General XP is a pretty powerful machine in the right hands. Using this machine temporarily removed the blockage, keyword temporarily. Aside from using it a couple of times, the setup is very easy, but there's moments where it got tangled or the motor would overheat, which were frustrating, but that just came down to my lack of real experience with it. More importantly, the pipes were filled with roots, so it's not completely my fault. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.